14 minutes after 1 o'clock. Nip Jones on your radio. Funky Fresh Freaky Friday. We're sitting here with Mr. Titan Knight, Mr. Nippy Jones. Yeah. Where did it all start? How did it all begin for you? Let me rewind the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Go all the way back. Uh, God, when I was uh, just getting out of college, didn't graduate, but I, I did a couple of years in college. Came out of college and uh, I started working and a friend of mine uh, who I graduated with, he uh, was uh, one of, a teacher at one of the middle schools in Plano, and we used to go to parties all, together a lot, and we used to just turn the place out. We were, the, we were the life of the party, and he came up with this grand idea. He said, uh, you know the way that we do the parties, I think we can do some school dances like that and make a lot of money. And when he said that, I said, cha-ching, so <laughs> yes, so I said, let's try that. So. It started about uh, doing uh, middle school dances, then it went to high school dances, and then from high school dances all the way just, it, 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 it spread abroad. You know, we've done parties and weddings and everything that we could get our, get, get our hands on. You know, so that's, that's how it all really started. And then, once I got into the groove of that, and then I started like, I wonder what this would be like getting into radio. Since, you know, I kind of had the, the talent and the, and the groove for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went several years, you know, practicing, listening to other DJs, having an imaginary radio station of my own. You know, <laughs> I got tapes. I got tapes, too. I'll let I can let y'all listen to I got tapes of it, man. <laughs> but I studied, I studied DJs. Okay. And I studied how they did things. You know, most of the time, what... In real life, you can only get into a radio station by having broadcasting skills, mm -hmm. going to school, this, that, and the other. Yeah, but when you have God-given talent and God helps you develop those talents, that's what happened with me. And I got a call from a KNON. It was 90.9 .9 at the time. Uh, okay. My brother told me about them. And uh, I went down there and I tried out. and. Unfortunately, I got fired the first day. Oh, oh no. Yeah, they told us, don't call us, we'll call you. Oh. That was on the Thursday. I remember like it was just yesterday. And uh, when I went back, he called me, told me that, and he said, okay. I said, okay, that's cool. Just like that. I said, you know, I went down and I tried. You know, they put me on the air for the first time. And, you know, me not having radio experience, mm -hmm. you know, I was kind of freaking out. You know, I was doing some things that weren't professional. You know, like turning the microphone up too high. You know, after you've been in the street hollering and screaming all the time, it's a whole different thing when you're on the radio. <laughs> they try to tell you, chill out, homes. You know what I'm saying? You're on the radio. Just like that, you know. So, but it didn't really bother me, but that's just the way that I was. So, after that, um, that same week, that same weekend, he called me back uh, on a Sunday. The guy that was supposed to be on the air called in sick. So, he called me back that Sunday. And he said, uh, what are you going to be doing next Thursday? It was a week later. I said, nothing. What's the deal? He's like, yeah. He said, we'd like to give you another try. I said, oh, okay. And then when he said that, I went to work. I started gathering up my, my music, started practicing and going on. And my, first, my second day on the air down there, he came to me and said, you know what? I think we're going to put you in the format down there. So I was on the air on Thursday from 2 from uh, 12 to 2, you know, those were the longest uh, two hours. <laughs> Actually, it was 12 to 3. Yeah, yeah, we started out 12 to 3. And uh, that, was, that, that was some long hours just being on the air and not knowing what to do and how to do things. Yeah. Just I'm getting my own air experience right there. It's like that. So, uh, I mean, I can go on and on and on. You can stop me at any time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So after, after I went on for a while, uh, he, 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 he started having confidence in me. He said, oh, I believe, I believe that we can make this work. He said, you have a special talent, so, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. So we give you, give you your show, just like that. So they gave me a show, just like I said, from 2 to 3, just like that. And then, after I got on there, I got comfortable, feel, I, I, I knew what I was doing. I said, oh, yeah, this is me. 
I'm an entertainer. I, lo I love yeah. this. I love this. And it showed while I was on the air. Because, you see, they had never seen anybody come on the air and be as so energetic as I was. It's like that. Yeah. And so after I did that, then I started coming up with different concepts. Bringing in rappers, bringing in dancers, oh, wow. okay. you know, bringing in DJs, you know, letting them get exposed, uh, some exposure of what they could do and how they could do it. You know, let them showcase their talent. You know what I'm saying? After we did, after I did that, I did it for five years. So after I was on the air at KNON for five years, uh, I got a call from the general manager at K104 on the hotline. And uh, he introduced himself to me. I didn't know who he was because I wasn't into commercial radio, like knowing who is who, what is what. Okay. You know, I just knew a few DJs like Tom Joyner, you know, uh, uh, D -Dot, I mean, Dude I Dick Edwards, Wavon St. John. I've heard of those guys and talked to Wavon for uh, when she was on the air. But I didn't know, I didn't know the inside scoop. But he was the main man of the radio station and he called me and he, he asked me, he said, uh, do you have time to talk? Uh, I said, yep. It's like, yeah. Uh, first of all, when he told me who he was, I put him on hold. And this, this, is, this is the man that when he touched stuff, it turns to gold. Okay, so I put him on hold, and uh, I went into my, uh, my program director at KNON, and I said, uh, do you know Chuck Smith? And he said, yeah, Chuck Smith, uh, he's a legend, he's an icon, just like that for K104, he's the main man. He said, when he, when he speaks, things happen. Just like that, I said, well, you know what, I got him on, I got him on the telephone on hold right now, just like that. He said... You what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got him on the telephone on hold right now. He said, boy, what you in there doing? What you doing in there talking to me? And I'm like, for what? Why? See, that's, man, get back in there and talk to that man. So I rushed back in there and I'm like, uh, I picked up the phone, sir. Are you still there? He said, yeah, I'm still there. He said, is there any way that we can talk? I said, yeah, we can talk. I said, what's pertaining to? He said, I want to talk to you by radio. It's like that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. He said, what time do you get off? And he asked him what time I got off. And I told him I got off at 2.30, or uh, 3 o'clock, and I said, I, will, I should be at home in about 30 minutes or so. I gave my phone number. As soon as I walked through my door, as soon as I walked through the door, the phone was ringing. And they were saying, Mr. Smith, a man by the Mr. Smith's on the phone. I said, this stuff is real. That's when I started saying, it's real now. It's like, yeah, so we talked, and uh, he said, I've been listening to you for a long, long time. I had to study you. It's like, yeah, and he said, I needed... Someone that can bring a different concept to my radio station. He said, what you got over at KNON is what we need. He said, we've lost all of our listeners from the time that you're on to the time that you're off. We lost all of them. And he said, with what you're doing, we can get our listeners back and more. It's like, and I'm saying, man. And I was like, okay, so what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? But he, he told me, he said, you're bringing guys in that has talent that's not getting recognized here in Dallas. He said, and this can bring things to the point to where Dallas can be recognized. It's like that. And he said, best thing about it is that you, you sound like that it's not all about you. It's all about the people that you bring in, you know, to help build this, this, this monument that you're trying to do here in Dallas. And I'm, I told myself, I'm just having fun. I got a full-time job, I'm married, you know, and everything's going good for me. I'm just up here having fun. He said, no, it's more than just having fun. He said, you making a mark that can't be erased right now. He said, and I would like for you to come over to our radio station and do all of this, you know, and bring everything, everybody, every piece of equipment that you got with you. He said, and we can put you on the air. So we met, uh, we met downtown to have breakfast, and he explained to me, what he wanted me to do and how he wanted me to do it. He said, now there's one thing I don't, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna take your personality away from you because there's something special about what you do. Mm -hmm. you know but I'm gonna, I'm gonna shape and form you. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna help you out as a DJ, but I'm not gonna turn you into just an ordinary, I'm, you're not gonna be an ordinary DJ. You're gonna be somebody that's gonna be on the air like you are at KNON, you know, just have fun on the radio. And he said, this is, one, this is what's gonna attract a lot of people. This is what's going to make our numbers go up. It's like that, because you're going to make everybody out there listening to you feel like I feel. He said, I feel like that I'm a part of your show every time I listen to you. 
You got everybody up there having fun, jumping up and down. Y'all, y'all clowning and going on. He said, I feel like I'm a part of it. He said, that's the way we want our audience to feel. That's the feedback we got to get from them, just like that. And he said, what we're going to do, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to go and set a date when to bring you over. It's like that. So I said, okay. So after that, uh, he called me back and he said, uh, we got a date. I said, what is it? He said, it's going to be, I'm not, I think it was Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. I, that's, I can't remember which one it was. Wow. It, it was it was Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, and that's when you know the ratings are when the rating period stops during the holidays. So you can just put your grandma on the radio if you want to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it wouldn't affect the ratings at all. Mm -hmm. So that was my trial period. So um, he said we'll put you on then, and uh, he called me up and he said we're going to promote you. And I'm saying promote me? How are you going to promote me? It's like that. He said we're going to we're going to run uh, spots. During the, during the day, during the afternoon, during the night, that Nippy Jones is coming to K-104. Just like that. And I'm like, man. That's when I realized that it was big. Now, when it, when it, it floored me, when I heard it, I mean, it had all these sound effects. <laughs> da, 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 da. Nippy Jones come to K-104. And I'm like, that's me. <laughs> that's me. That is me. I'm running around the house jumping them down doing the James Brown. That's me. That's me. That's me. I was really excited about it, man. I I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't I stayed glued to the radio until my 24/7 just to hear that promo. And they ran it for about a week. They ran it for about a week. It's like yeah. So he would call me and check on me and say, "You ready?" It's like that. So I mean. I was spending every day, every second, every minute, every hour, you know, getting prepared for that show. And I'm telling you, he was ready the day of. He said, all right, this is the day. He said, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to be in the hotel and I'm going to be listening to you. I said, okay, sir. It's like, yeah. So I done called all my DJs up during that week. Called all my rappers up during that week. All my dancers up during that week. I said, we finna, we finna bum rush K104. I want everybody to be on board with me when I go there. So some of the DJs over there, they were like, Ken O'Neill came down. Not all of them, but it was it was several of them, and uh, we were playing tapes at the time. We they weren't live. We didn't go live. We okay. were playing tapes at the time. They did some pre-recorded remixes, pre-recorded uh, mixes, and uh, the night of the show, uh, we went off the hook. I mean, the rating. I mean, the 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 request line never stopped ringing. Never stopped. We didn't have a dead moment in there. It's like that, and it just kept on and on and on and on and on, and boy, we felt so good. We felt so good. I said, man, this is it. I am in big time radio, dude. Just like that. I said, we all in it now. It's like that, and um, come Monday, when, yeah, come Monday, the program director called me. Just like that. My, the program director called me and said, Nippy? I said, yes, sir. Uh, how you feel? I said, I feel pretty good. It's like, yeah, uh, I think we had a really good time. And I say that's probably a lot of things that we're going to gonna have to work on. I said, but I think it, it went very well. Just like that. He said, well, I tell you what, Nip, uh, uh, let's, let's try something else. We, we, don't call us. We'll call you. So I got fired mm -hmm. twice on my first oh. day on the air. Twice. First oh, day man. on the air. First day, so he fired me. <laughs> he fired my name was Michael Spears. I remember it. just like that. And and I said, "Well, sir, that's I said that's cool." And, and we gave it a try. He said, "Yeah," and he said, "You did real good." He said, "But I don't think that's what we're looking for." Just like that. And uh, I said, "Okay, all right." Two minutes later, <laughs> hello, Nippy. Yes, sir. It's Miss Smith. Oh, okay. How you feel? I say. I ain't, I'm not feeling too good right now. <laughs> I just got fired. <laughs> like that, he said, you just got what? I said, yeah, I just got fired. Michael called me and said that uh, you guys are going to try something else. You know, because they had like uh, Dr. Rock. Okay. They had Dr. Rock and, and Uche. All those guys came before me. So they had already set, the, set the, uh, the ground level for me to come in. But the program directors and all those people... They were hooked on that, you know, because those guys had good ratings. They were doing good. 
but they didn't have the concept that, that we had, just like that. And uh, Chuck Smith said, oh, he did? I said, yeah. You know what I say? I'll call you back in five minutes. I said, okay. But I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. When he said that we'll try something different, that was like a weight off my shoulder. I'm telling you, I was so relieved I didn't know what to do. I said, that, that was a lot of pressure. Yeah. For almost three, three or four weeks, that was a lot of pressure. And I just, and I had to go to work and couldn't work because I was thinking about it all the time. But five minutes later, Michael Spirits called me back. Nippy, I said, yes, sir. I think we're going to try it again. It's like, <laughs> I, I think, I think we're going to try it again. So Chuck had to call him and explain to him why he wanted me to come over there and to bring the concept that I had uh, uh, with me mm -hmm. so they could use it at the racer. See, he could see stuff that other people could because they was in this, just like say they were in a small little box. Yeah. And they was like they 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 were they was tuned in to what had been happening and it had been working for them. It was working for them. You had you Shea on the radio, you had Dr. Rock on the radio. It's working, baby. You hear what I'm saying? It's working. Cause I'm out there listening to them. You know what I'm saying? What? Man, these dudes rocking the airways. Just like that. But they couldn't see the concept and how far the radio station could go with what we brought to the to the to the table. It's like that. And uh, so Max said, we'll try it again. And we went right back on the air, uh, you know, every Friday. He said, he said we're going to give you every Friday night. It's like that. So I said, I got I to gotta bring my concept over here uh, that I had at KNON. And it was a funky, fresh, freaky Friday show. And now, back to Nippy Jones' funky, fresh, freaky Friday night house party. It's house party in the house, dude. <laughs> That's a whole lot of fun, you know what I'm saying? Nip Jones on your radio, got fuck on him, age 22. And just so much stuff that, that we did together. It's like we had house parties. We we broadcast live from different garages, and we went wow. to weddings and all kinds of stuff. This is the stuff that took the radio, radio station over the top. It's like that. So when we started doing all of that, we started gaining listeners from 12 all the way up to 55. You know what I mean? All the way up to 55. So we did that for a while. You know, all the, I, was, I was scheduling DJs to come in and mix. And then we started mixing live. That's what it did. Okay. We started coming in and mixing live. So we had DJ Curly. We had uh, DJ Scratch. We had Earthquake, d Shay, Smoothie. Uh, oh, it was just, it was a DJ Scorpio, you know, Easy Eddie D, in which he was with me over at KNON. You know, he helped me, he helped, build, helped me build my show over there, and he took over after I left, you know. So we had all these guys, and there was a lot of guys I hadn't mentioned, but I didn't mention Dr. Funk, you know, he was one of the guys, uh, I just go on and on and on and on. I was giving all these guys breaks on the air to come up there and mix and do whatever they, Reggie D, you know, throw down Sam, you know, Sam was already there when I got there, but he came on the show and started mixing too. So, so... We took it to a whole nother level where the, the ratings were, uh, were up and people really started liking us and they started getting us free reign of what we wanted to do. And it, was, and it was something that they took a chance on because when you're in commercial radio, you, you, back then you just didn't step out, out of bounds. You know, you mm -hmm. stayed in the confines of what was going on yeah. at all times. You know what I'm saying? But Chuck Smith said, if we step out of bounds, we're going we gonna to take a chance and step out of bounds, and we're going to take this thing to a whole nother level because I'm telling you, this ain't happening nowhere else. So, it's, uh, so I was like, okay, I'm good with it. I'm still having fun. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not really thinking how serious it is. You know, I'm just having fun. You know what I'm saying? But that man met with me every day. He met with me every day for two or three hours, and we sat and we talked, and we sat and we talked, you know, and he, he gave me pointers on some things that I needed to learn. You know, he said, most people have to go to school for this. But you, uh-uh, I'm just going to show you like that. So that went on for a while. We went for a couple of years. Uh, we were doing the Funky Fresh Freaky Friday show. And then the program director, and we was doing good. We was number one in our, in our, in our uh, slot, uh, time slot. You know, we was taking them, well, we was taking them by storm. And 
course, you know, when you're in radio, you got program directors that want to change things up and make things a little better, add a little flavor to what to what you're doing. And they decide to bring in two nationally owned rappers, uh, known rappers, uh, Boss and Coco Butter. And they, they brought them out of, uh, I think they brought them out of Houston. I think they were down there on the air. So program director went down there, recruited them to come up here. And we kept the same concept, Funky Fresh Freaky Friday show, because they really liked that. They said, yeah, that's, that's the jam right there. So, uh, but the thing is, we was going to be on like five nights a week. You know, so Monday through Thursday, it was just regular. We did our thing, and then Friday was Funky Fresh Freaky Friday. It's like that. Yeah. So when they brought Boston Cocoa Buddy in, it took our ratings to a whole nother level because Boss was well known. She was one of the most gangsterous rapper, female rappers around at that time, you know, and she had a flow that was out of this world. You know, every time she, every time she rapped, I got chills. You know, just, it was just an experience just to be in the studio with her, to see her just go off the way that she went off. Just like that, Cocoa Butter was just a natural. You can drop a, a pen on the floor and he can rap about it. You know, he, he, he was so talented. It's like that. So, when they brought Coco Butter and, and Boss in, uh, we started getting out into the community a whole lot. You know, because uh, I, I decided, I said, you know what? Why don't we just make this thing to where we can get out in the public and really make them feel like they're part of our show? They gave us the van, the broadcast live and everything. And so we just took advantage of it. You know, we took it to a whole nother level. We went in some towns we weren't supposed to be in. But <laughs> I can say that now. You know what I'm saying? But we were out there. They never found out about it, but we were out there. And, and that's what brought ratings in, too, because you had, you had people who listened to us the long distance that never got a chance to see or be in contact with, with, with the DJ at K104. And they thought that was a, they thought, they just thought that was the biggest thing ever. You know, we went to Waxahachie one night, which, you know, we, we had permission to do that. You know, one of the chicken places down there, it was a black-owned chicken place. And uh, he said, if y'all come down there and broadcast live, we'll give chicken away the whole time you're down there for free. And you would have, you would have, I, I think, I remember the, the, the movie The Day the Earth Still Still. I think Waxahachie had nobody moving around down there. They was all down at the chicken shack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so we went down there and we started moving around all over the city. Like that. And with that concept, man, it brought ratings up. It brought us notoriety. Uh, they did, they did uh, a news. John McKay came in and did a, a news thing on us, you know, over the, for the weekend. I mean, we were, we, were, we were large. We were big time large, I'm telling you. And it just went on and on and on and on and on. It, it's a it's a success story, successful story, because I mean we started with with a concept of just putting people on the air, you know, and showcasing their talent. And now it's to the point to where it's like everybody remembers that, you know, and that's what they're longing for. They're still longing for stuff like that. I'm not saying radio is not doing what it's supposed to do, but I mean it's just the the concept that we had was just it was just it was over the top. You know, it was it was it was over the top, and and from there it was history. From there it was history. I stayed there from uh, I did full time from ninety nine to uh, eighty nine to ninety nine, and that's when my career ended at, at one hundred four. My most memorable moment, one of my most memorable moments, is when we ran one hundred point three out of town. They they had to shut down because we had took all of their listeners over there. 
just like that. That was and, and and that was that was a big thing in radio when when two urban radio stations are coming up against each other. It's like that, you know. And they had some pretty talented people over there. It was just the concept that we had. I'm telling you, the concept we had was just out of this world. It was just everybody was family on the radio, off the radio, and that's how they felt, and that's why they listened to us. Not only that, we gave them CDs and we gave tickets away to concerts and things like that. And we hung out with them just like that with we were brothers and sisters. The thing that I get out of it, the most enjoyable thing that I get out of it is giving people a chance to expose their talent. And when you, when you do that with each individual, what you're doing is, is you're building a monument for the whole city. Because, you know, in, in radio... In, in, the, in the rap world, in the entertainment world, you know, Dallas wasn't getting a whole lot of uh, kudos, you know. They wasn't getting noticed, they wasn't getting noticed about a lot of stuff. So, you know, I was still having fun, but then again, I started seeing some things that said, well, we can take this thing to another level, where some notoriety can come to Dallas, and they respect us. You know, especially rappers, you know, because the East Coast, West Coast, jumping out, jumping up, going against each other. You know, they trying to see who's the best. And Dallas is just under the bottom. Ain't nobody talking about them. So my thing then, my thing was that uh, to give them an opportunity to expose themselves <clears throat> to bring the city out of the dumps where, where they were. It's like, and we did a good job. We, we, we really did a good job. Uh, now, after I left, you know, it was up to... The, the other guys to keep this thing afloat, you know, and just like I said, now I don't know what's what's really going on. I see a lot of Facebook things with like Easy Eddie D, DJ Scratch, and all the local club DJs. I see things like that, but I'm not I'm not seeing anything big that you can look back and say, you know what, Dallas is the place to be. I'm not seeing that right now. But at the time we were coming up, people were talking about us. We probably didn't reach that that. At the top where we wanted to be at, but people wanted we did people didn't notice who we were and where we were coming from. It's like that. And then when we start bringing in all all the rappers, the no no uh, known rappers like Salt and Pepper, you know, uh, just Ice Cube, you know, Mitzi, uh, Mitzi Elliott, you know, all of these people were coming into the radio station with the help of uh, uh, Skip Cheatham, who was our, our music director. You know, he was pulling strings for us to get these people in, to put some icing on the cake where we were at, because we were getting big. So they wanted us to get bigger, and they figured if we did that, then you know, we could blow up. And we did. And that's what happened. Okay. So do you have any advice for anybody coming up that's trying to get into radio? Um, any, any tips or anything that you would tell um, an inspiring youngster mm -hmm. that, you know... Wants but, to but do if, what you do. If 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 that's uh, if that's your dream, you know that that was a dream of mine. Like like I was telling some of my partners before I got into radio, but before I got into, I had I had the Pacific radio station I wanted to work for, and I said K one hundred four. Then I said, you know what, I like to work for K one hundred four. I did say that. I kept saying it, kept saying it, kept saying it, and kept saying it, even though it was ten years later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, but I kept saying it, and that opportunity, that opportunity presented itself. If you believe in what you do, and you know you have the talent to do it, you know, uh, just continue to say what you're going, say what you want, because words are powerful. You know, you keep speaking words, keep speaking positive things over your life, then you won't get positive results. So that's what we had. That's what I had to do is to continue to speak. And continue to believe, and continue not just believe, but but uh, put it into action. You know, every time I did a dance, you know, I, when I was doing the dance, I, I I I had radio on my mind. You know, but stay with stay with the dream. Always believe in yourself, and knowing that God will put people in your life as you see that He put somebody in my life that saw something in me, saw something more in me that I that I couldn't see in myself. You know what I'm saying? So. Just, just stay with your dream and believe that God can, can, can take you through. And that's what he did for me. Okay. Um, so what's next for Mr. Nippy Jones? 
wherever the Lord leads me. He said, the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and I consider myself a good man. And, 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 and yeah, because I'm, I'm, I've grown spiritually now. I, I, that was an experience for me to go to the next level in life, spiritually, emotionally, financially, all of that, you know, come together. It's coming together now. So whatever the next step may be, you know, I just, I just leave it up to him. You know, I, I live my dream. I ain't going to lie. And to a lot of, uh, well, I ain't going to say a lot of people, but there's people that can't say that. You know, I lived out my dream, and I hate the way that it ended because it, end, it ended abruptly and unexpected, you mm -hmm. see. So, because once, once you get into it, you're thinking this, it's going to last a long time. But a lot of people will let you know, no, it won't last a long time unless you really got the connections. You know, I had local connection. I didn't have worldwide connection, just like that. But I wasn't really thinking about even stepping outside the box. I just wanted to make a name for our, a name for all of us, not just for me, but for all of us, which we did here in Dallas and Fort Worth. And I'm telling you, the name still claims what we did. And I love it. And I love it. Everywhere you go, tight at night. Don't, don't nobody, don't, can't nobody duplicate that. <laughs> you are so right. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> but we, we, we were very fortunate and very blessed to, to, to work together and go through the times that we went through to, to establish what we established. And that was, that was, and that's something I'll always be proud of. I'll always be proud of. I can look back on it and say, you know what? I live my dream. I said, but God's got more for me. And whatever it is, I want to tap into it and be all that he called me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you taking this time to talk to us. It, well, it's been what? a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm just honored and like in awe yeah. of standing in front of Nippin' <laughs> so. Well, it's... it's, it's Man, because you don't you don't feel like you don't feel like you made a mark. You know what I'm saying? You even though you did, and I, I guess that's the humble spirit that I have. Because it wasn't all about me. My name was out there, but it wasn't it wasn't really all about me. You know, they did a a, a documentary on Dallas. We we was we from Dallas? Yeah, we from Dallas, and uh, I was in it. It's like yeah. And one of the guys came up to me, who was the producer, one of the producers came up, he said, man, they need to name a street after you here in Dallas. He said, because you paved the way for everybody. It's like, yeah, and I'm like, I agree. Man, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, it is an honor to be able to, to, to come on camera and to uh, reminisce about those things that we did do, the things, uh, the lives that we did change. You know, making a mark that can't be erased. You know, Tighter Night, they'll remember Tighter Night for Elvis, like, you know, because no one has come along and and took up the mantle, you know, and ran with it like we did. It's like that. So, that's the end of that story. All right? All right. All right, then. All right, then. <laughs>